So let us uh, today talk on a topic called Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga is a concept which appears in the uh, Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad Gita is a uh, conversation which happens between Lord Krishna and Arjuna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And this Karma Yoga concept has been be given by Lord Krishna and it is related to our duty, how to do our duty and what are the rules, uh, what are the spiritual uh, context and um, how duty can liberate us. Okay, so this is a unique concept uh, provided by Lord Krishna and uh, uh, it's a concept uh, uh, where, where duty can liberate us. Okay, duty which can give us freedom. Okay, so that is one concept that Karma Yoga provides and let us study in little details how it is uh, related to us, all of us. So let us study the concept, uh, context in which Lord Krishna had to give this Karma Yoga's message to Arjuna. Um, both the armies of Pandavas and Kauravas were gathered in the battlefield of Kurukhetra and the battle was about to occur when Arjuna requested Krishna who was his Sarathi to place the chariot between the two armies so that he can visualize with whom he has to fight. And when he visualizes that he has to fight the battle with his own uh, brothers, own guru, uh, own Bhish, own uh, father-like figure like uh, Bhishma Pitama, uh, grandfather, so to call, and uh, and so many other uh, people uh, who were his relatives. So, and these were people Arjuna highly respected them. So Arjuna was taken over by grief, attachment, despondency and he said Krishna, I am not going to fight this battle, what's use is killing my own relatives for the sake of kingdom. Then Krishna uh, but, uh, rebuked him saying where does this unmanliness come to you Arjuna? Uh, where does this uh, weakness of the heart come to you? Where does this cowardness come to you? You are a Kshatriya, you are a warrior and you must be strong and brave. So I don't know where it has come to you. When Krishna rebuked Arjuna like that, Arjuna was shaken and he realized that something was wrong with him. Uh, uh, he told uh, Krishna, that Krishna kindly guide, uh, guide me. I am not knowing what exactly my duty is, how to do my duty, so I don't know that. Okay, so kindly guide me in that perspective. I um, I accept your sharnagati because I become your disciple. So please guide me, okay, as a guru. Then Krishna takes over and tells him that what you think you will be killing is this physical bodies but these bodies are in any case destructible they are made of matter and bound to uh, perish one day all that thing all things that will be born will die one day and all things that those are those die will be born again but this is about the material things. Anything material will have birth and death. Okay, will have a life. But our soul, our atma, doesn't have uh, birth and death. It has neither birth nor death. It is ageless. It is timeless. It is Sachidananda Swarupa. So Krishna says the soul never dies. Okay, it just changes clothes 
uh, it, it just like we change clothes it changes bodies okay when we uh, give up old clothes and take up new clothes it's similar to that then krishna tells uh, arjuna that uh, the soul cannot be destroyed by weapons it cannot be destroyed by fire it cannot be weighted by water it cannot be dried by wind nainam chindanti sastrani nainam dahati pavaka nainam klidyanti tapo nainam shushyati maruta so don't grief about that okay then krishna tells even if you think ki this people uh, there is no rebirth still you don't have to be uh, worry because anyone who takes birth will die one day so uh, you need not grief for that okay so in that way krishna gives uh, him the uh, concept of atma and what you see is what you see before is that are souls not bodies so nobody can kill anybody and nobody uh, kills anybody uh, so you need not worry about that at this stage you are filled with uh, attachment towards your relatives but your relatives are siding with the wrong and so it's your duty to fight this battle as a kshatriya it's your natural duty and it, it is important that if we perform our swadharma or natural duty for example i being a teacher it's my natural duty to teach for a brahmana it is to do the puja for a kshatriya it is to fight for a doctor it is to uh, do his treatment so we should not go avoid our natural duty in that context uh krishna also lays down certain rules in the bhagavad gita and let us study bhagwan says the essence of karma yoga is the essence of karma yoga is duty free uh the essence of karma yoga is duty free from attachment duty with attachment is the cause of uh, uh bondage and that without is is freedom so main cause of uh, karma uh, du- attachment uh, du- uh, k- main essence of karma yoga is duty free from attachment we do basically well of us do duties because with attachment uh, attachment moves us in some way okay kind of attachment we are the kind of desires we have the kind of relationship they push us into duty okay uh, but here krishna says duty with attachment is the cause of bondage and that without is freedom and that is called karma yoga okay ordinary duty is just called karma but karma yoga is different so duty done without expectation or without seeking the result is karma yoga so with the, when we don't seek the results yes results will come but we do our duty this keeps our focus on the duty uh, duty centric attitude that is important and this helps us to perform our duty with perfection with um, with a great bit of um, skill that you can say now krishna says arjuna no one can remain in this world when arjuna says let me become a sanyasi so krishna says no one can remain in this world without doing any action uh, everyone at least has to breathe his eyelids will move so long as his life so that is also karma so that is also action so no one can remain in this world without doing action and it is the gunas the three gunas sattva raja tama which drives us into action so uh, people think they are doing their action due to their ego but actually it is the gunas that drive them into action now krishna says there is no point 
force, uh, in forcefully be retraining senses while engaging in thoughts about sensory objects and pleasure. Again, Krishna says how to do your duty, not uh, engaging the mind in sensory objects and pleasure, not uh, without desire. Okay. Uh, so, not engaging, uh, forcibly we can control our senses, our indriyas, um, our karma indriyas, that is hands, legs, those kinds of things, and yet we engage mentally into uh, sensory uh, objects and pleasure, okay, uh, in enjoying them. So, that Krishna calls, that is not the right way to perform duty. In fact, that is hypo hypocrisy. And now Krishna says, action done for the sake of sacrifice does not bind. So, what kind of actions do not bind? Anything that is done with attachment binds, but anything done for the sake of sacrifice, that is not for self, uh, but that is for the higher good, that is for others, that is for sacrifice, that is for maybe for the divine, that is for a higher goal, like Abdul Kalam. He, whatever he did, he did for the nation. He worked for the country. He built the missiles so that the country could be protected. He did not do it for himself. Okay, And this was an example of great Karma Yoga. Okay, So, Karma Yoga is that where we do our actions for the sake of sacrifice. Yagnartha arthat karma means for the sake of yagna. Now Krishna tells, one who is satisfied in the self and derives happiness from the self is said to be free from his duty as he is not attached to nothing except his self. One who is attached cannot be free and one who is attached to the self that is within his own self within the God, within, within the divinity, within, within the supreme within. Because he is attached to the supreme, he is doing the duty for the supreme, that does not create attachment. Okay? So, uh, he does his duty for his self, for the Almighty, for the universe, for the uh, uh, divine within him, for the... Uh, universal soul, you can say, so that doesn't create attachment and that is the right way to indulge in Karma Yoga. Now, Krishna, now this is something, uh, duty done, there is such slight change, duty done with, uh, without attachment, sorry, duty done without attachment is the key to freedom and will help in self-realization. This is also the way to get self-realized. Okay, So now, Lord Krishna says about himself that there is no duty that I need to perform, yet I do my duties and if I don't do my duties, the world will perish. Lord Krishna being the Lord of the universe, he controls the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the sky, the water and he says if in the animal kingdom, the man kingdom, everything, death and birth, he controls everything. So, Lord Krishna says that there is no duty that I need to perform, yet I do my duties and if I don't do my duties for a second also, the world will perish. He has a bigger responsibility. Yet, being the Lord of the universe, he has no duty as such. He is not in an obligation to perform his duty. Okay? Now, people are impelled in their actions by their senses and attachment. The key is to offer all your actions to me or the soul within. The Lord Krishna says, don't be impelled by their senses and attachment to do your duty, but the key is to offer all your actions to me or the soul within and perform your duty for me, for my sake, for being the, for the higher objective within you, for the Lord, for pleasing the Lord, not for pleasing anybody on this planet, any friend, any relative, but for pleasing me. Uh, you do your duty and dedicate to you me and you will be liberated. Your duty, even if it has some faults, it will be taken care by the Lord. So, the surrender is the key while doing the duty. Now, there is a beautiful uh, uh, detachment is nothing, but actually it is reversed. Detachment is nothing, but moving towards God 
and attachment is nothing but moving away from gods this is by bhagwan sri satya sai baba now krishna again comes that lust and anger are two worst enemies of human beings we must avoid them at any cost excessive desire covers our mind what uh, covers our duty is excessive desires cover our mind like dust covers the mirror and then our reflection is not visible the senses are seat for them hence we must control them the lust and anger uh, uh, cover our mind excessive desires cover clouds our mind like the clouds cover the sun so excessive desire lust and anger they cover our mind like the mirror and uh, like dust covers the mirror so we have to take care that we do not put a covering of lust and anger we must avoid them at any cost the senses are seat for them hence we must control them lord krishna says now krishna says uh, that the senses are superior to objects uh, superior to objects the mind is superior to the senses the mind is superior to our sense five senses the intelligence is superior to the mind it is like the break of the mind the mind doesn't think but the intelligent refines the mind thought process in the mind and the self is even more superior to the intelligence when we are connected to the intelligence we are even doing a, uh, we are connected to the universe as such self means the universe within you but uh, intelligence means that your own intelligence your individual intelligence but here we are talking self in the sense of cosmic intelligence so when we are attached it is superior to the self too at the end krishna says surrender all your work to me uh, do all your work for me this will free you completely do all actions for me and this actually is the complete essence of karma yoga i hope all of you have understood it so thank you so much and it's a valuable concept we can put in our daily life also in our day to day life and we can all gain from it abdul kalam gate from it mahatma gandhi gate from it and there were lot of people whom this karma yoga has inspired even the uh, sun god is inspired by karma yoga he does his duty without seeking attachment he wake, he uh, gets he does his duty without fail so he is a perfect karma yogi okay so in that way we also have to uh, move towards the perfect idealism of karma yoga and this is going to sanctify our life free our life liberate our life and take us near to the divinity so thank you so much i hope you like this uh